Update 211 came out this week with its main attraction being Gao Feng's third smuggler pack. That means another weapons DLC for us to play around with. I'm always excited for new content, but we're in a groove with weapon DLCs now where we have a good idea of what to expect. Except if you thought Gao Feng's third weapon shipment was just going to be your run of the mill affair, you were sorely mistaken. You see, alongside a flashy new trailer, which I really liked, Overkill have crafted three completely unique, stylish and viable weapons. That isn't to say they've thrown a load of unbridled power our way, making this a must-buy DLC simply to avoid falling behind on the meta. No, this is one of my favourite DLC releases because it tries something new across the board. Instead of adding side grades and reskins, all three base editions feel and play in a unique fashion. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't always work in their favour. The new revolver is fairly stat deficient, despite looking and feeling amazing. But at the end of the day, Payday 2 isn't just about smashing out death sentence runs like your life depends on it. Sometimes, style over substance works for me. Let me start this video by quickly covering what this DLC has to offer. The first of the three weapons is the RUS-12 Angry Tiger Revolver. This thing is unique in that it's the first revolver class weapon which offers bullet penetration. It also looks phenomenal. Second, we have the Kang Arms Model 54 pistol, which also comes in an akimbo variant. This is the real standout performer here with its underbarrel shotgun attachment offering a ton of versatility and some pretty insane DPS when paired with Bulletstorm, as you may have seen yesterday. The final weapon of this DLC pack is the KS-12 Urban Assault Rifle. This thing is unique in that it's a long boy. In all seriousness though, the KS-12 is a new DMR option which actually offers more damage than pretty much anything else in the category, opening a few new build options. Not to mention, the long silencer attachment is going to help on other weapons tremendously, boosting the value of this DLC pack for all players. Additionally, we received the usual weapon colour pack, but this time we only got four new colours. I'm a big fan of these though, quality over quantity, and in place of those extra colours we have a brand new cosmetic system in the game. Weapon charms are these little keychains you can attach to the side of your weapons. They're not overly in your face, so don't worry about these dangly things being off-putting. In this DLC, you'll receive the Frag Grenade, Dallas Mask, Loot Bag and Piggy Bank charms, with the Dozer and Cloaker charms available to all for free. They're cute and non-intrusive, and thanks to the wonderfully dedicated modding community, I'm sure we'll have more customizable options to play around with soon enough. So now that you know what you're getting, I want to go a little deeper in discussing the quality of this content. Remember, I'm still very much at the early impressions honeymoon stage, so forgive me if I miss some of the gritty details when it comes to important breakpoints and optimization. First up, the Angry Tiger, which as I've mentioned, looks incredible. Beyond the aesthetic though, it's packing the highest damage in the entire pistol category with no damage drop-off, and shares the bullet penetration effect with the 5.7 AP pistol. This is a pretty key detail, with the 5.7 being high meta in dozens of builds as a result of its shield killing capabilities. Sadly for the Angry Tiger, here's where it can't keep up. It is not a naturally concealable weapon, meaning it doesn't fit into all those builds that the 5.7 is used in. To make matters worse, it has a truly awful ammo capacity and pickup rate, meaning its ammo economy is pretty dreadful. Even when fully modified for it, it doesn't have great accuracy or stability, so I wouldn't replace your usual revolver with it either. I tried to craft a DMR build which revolved heavily around it and found some success, although it doesn't help that it's not even picking up the ammo it's meant to be at the current moment. When you're hitting, you'll be hitting hard, even through crowds, but I think Overkill is slightly over-accounting for the power of bullet penetration, and as a result, you won't be hitting hard for long with this thing. It's certainly not useless, and I found its best use was in a non-concealment build as a shield-killing secondary, but you can certainly do better. If you're just looking to optimize your builds, look no further than the AP Judge or 5.7 itself. Even so, I have to admit, the allure of the big iron on my hip still calls to me. Just give this thing a little more concealment, and we may see it rival the 5.7 in the future. Next up, we have the weapon I expected the least from, but was by far the most interested in by the end of my first play session. The Model 54 pistol is different. The shotgun under barrel gives it unparalleled versatility when used as intended, but also broken DPS when used creatively. You see, it doesn't have a standard fire rate, as with other shotguns which limit their firing speed when used with Bulletstorm or Swansong. That means when fired in a mode that doesn't require you to reload, you can shoot ludicrously quickly, pumping out insane damage. Even more when used in its akimbo variant. 
This is easy to set up as it takes more ammo from ammo bags to refill its secondary ammo type than likely should be the case, meaning you can ramp up large bullet storms early on. It also helps that when interacting with ammo bags, your secondary ammo is automatically refilled. This leads to clips like these. The underbarrels do have fixed damage depending on range, meaning that they're unaffected by the likes of Berserker and Lobolo, but their base damage of 850 is plenty to tear through crowds, as you see in these clips. Insane damage aside, my favourite thing about the weapon is how it can proc overkill aced independently within a shotgunless build. From there you can quickly switch back to the standard DPS of the pistol and do some serious, legitimate damage on DSOD. This is an incredibly fun and rewarding playstyle with these guns that doesn't involve cheesing things with the underbarrel fire rate. You see, on its own it's a plenty serviceable pistol, existing in the medium damage category with solid concealment, accuracy and stability stats. Pair with the overkill multiplier, expect it to out DPS most of your pistol builds. One thing I have failed to even note at this point is the differing ammo options out there. You're going to want bullstopper or flechette types of ammo if you're going for that huge DPS. But if you want a secondary with more utility, the AP slug is a great option. Again, armor piercing is key up against shields, and having that at the touch of a button without completely relying on a shotgun secondary can help this gun to fit into many more builds. Just remember, it is affected by shotgun skills, so you at least want shotgun CQB for that reload speed. Truly, this is one of my favourite weapon additions in a long time. It's brought out my creativity, especially when putting together builds, which is exactly what I hope for when faced with the potential of a new weapon. Finally, we have the KS-12 Urban Assault Rifle, another weapon with unique stats and a brand new feel to it. Variety seems to have been the focus of this DLC pack, with the KS-12 continuing to offer it. As a fully auto rifle, it has the highest damage in the category outside of full auto modded DMRs. It has comfortable ammo pickup and capacity, although it doesn't excel in terms of concealment, fire rate or accuracy and stability. I must confess that I still like it though. Something about the way it handles with the 500 RPM feels great and easy to control. Definitely not a gun that stands out on paper, but has to be felt to be understood. Whilst I enjoy it as an AR, the KS-12 is still likely better off as a DMR with its DMR kit, giving it 85 extra points of damage, placing it as the highest damage DMR in the game. It could be argued that this damage is slightly wasted unless you're running it with Frenzy, and comes at the cost of its ammo economy, concealment and mag size. Honestly, I'd trade off a little damage for better handling stats, but in the right build, it can still be a deadly DSOD viable option. 96 accuracy is possible with it, and coupled with Berserker and crits, expect to turn into a fully fledged marksman from virtually any range. The satisfaction levels from using this gun are definitely through the roof. I also love the new hourglass scope it comes with. Usually I'm pretty vanilla, preferring iron sights or the surgeon sight, but I had a great time with the 2.5x zoom on this one, as the gameplay hopefully shows. Oh, and the long silencer it brought with it is an excellent option for all assault rifles that aren't so concealment dependent. Definitely a sweetener for this DLC pack. There's a lot to love about these weapons and the pack in general. Of course, the weapon colours and additional cosmetics are always a matter of preference, although I know they seal the deal for some of you. But in terms of the meat and potatoes of this DLC, I'm pretty impressed. I think this is a superior way to go when it comes to creating new content for an 8 year old game. Get creative, try out new things and mechanics. Let us experiment and break them if need be. Either way, the process in itself is fun. The parts of this DLC pack which are more underwhelming to me may be what captures the eye of a newer player. I mean, just luck at the angry tiger. I'm also pretty damn impressed with how Overkill have marketed this one. But overall, lots of steps taken in the right direction here. I personally recommend you give this DLC a go if any of the weapons I've showcased appeal to you, especially if you're an assault rifle main. There's lots of fun and viability to be found, and where one dries up, the other really shines through. Also, we already have the hidden achievements in-game for the upcoming heist in the City of Gold campaign, so it's time to get excited for that. I'm anticipating that Overkill may look to round out this campaign before the year's out, so stay tuned on the channel for more news as it comes. As ever, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you all very soon.
As ever, thank you very much to my mean infamy patrons and above. If you want to join that infamous club to see yourself in the credits or get early exclusive access to my videos, including the story videos, check out my Patreon link below. Remember the Discord is open to all if you crave some more payday discussion. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you all very soon for the next one.